If you've ever been in the industrial environment, you might have seen some purple cables going in and out of machines. You might have been wondering what they are, what they are used for, and exactly how to program such systems. These cables are called Profibus, which stands for Process Field Bus. Hi guys, my name is Dimeji. I'm an automation engineer at Zip Automations Lagos, Nigeria. Today I'll be showing you how to control a variable frequency drive using field bus technology. In this case, we'll be using Profibus by Siemens. In recent times, industrial automation systems are transitioning from traditional monitoring and control using voltage and current to field bus technology where multiple parameters are transmitted over a single communication line called a bus. Typically, to control a variable frequency drive, we need an analog output module to change the frequency of the drive, we need a digital output module to start and stop the drive, we need an analog input module to read frequency feedback of the drive, and you need a digital input module to receive on-off status of parameters. For example, you'd want to know when the drive is on or off, whether it is in forward or reverse, and such other parameters. Even though this system works quite well, it often comes with significant installation and wiring costs. Profibus saves you the high cost of installation and wiring because control and feedback parameters are transmitted over a single communication cable called a bus. It also gives you access to far more parameters than are possible using traditional voltage and current control methodologies. So here in my hands, I have a Profibus communication cable. You can see uh, red and green wires coming out of it. The Profibus communication cable is usually used with this connector, which can either be 180 degrees as shown here, or 90 degrees as shown here. Now, Profibus is an RS-485 network, which means that the devices are looped in something called a daisy chain manner as shown on the screen. Here, the output of the PLC is looped to an IM module, which we are not using in this demonstration. The output of the interface module is then looped to a variable frequency drive, which is used to control the model. So I'll just take you through the setup here. I have an S7300 PLC, which is looped to a MicroMaster 420 VFD drive. The output of the VFD is connected to a three-phase induction model. Now, to monitor and control the process, we have a design on our K-1000 HMI. In this setup, the PLC is the master, while your variable frequency drive is the sleeve of the Profibus network. Now, I will take you through um, just the simple programming and the network interface. Now, here you can see on my entire portal here, you can see our setup. The PLC is the master of the Profibus network while the variable frequency drive is the sleeve of the Profibus network. The PLC is connected to our HMI through a, an Ethernet network. Here you can see some of the feedback parameters that we can get. These are actually tagged to our HMI for display. In the main program, you can see I have some networks. The first network is to run the drive forward. The second one is to run it in reverse. So we have other similar networks to stop the drive, to change the frequency, to reset drive faults, and to actually receive feedback frequency from the drive. So I'll be showing you a quick demonstration about how this works. In our HMI here, you can see um, we have different buttons. You can run the motor counterclockwise, you can run it clockwise, you can clear a fault, you can stop the drive. You can also change the frequency of the drive and you can even receive the feedback frequency, that's the speed at which the drive is actually running. On our status screen here, we have um, different parameters that we can monitor. Like I explained, Profibus gives you access to far more parameters than you'd get using traditional voltage and current. So here I have drive ready, drive ready to run, running forward reverse, you can see the current limit has not been reached, the motor is not overloaded, and a lot of other parameters. Here you can see that the drive is currently ready. So now, I will change the frequency of the drive to 35 and then run it clockwise. And you can see the speed, the drive is accelerating to 35 hertz from our feedback here and it is running in the forward direction. 
Now, if I change the, drive, the direction to reverse, I'll click run multiplicative, the drive is decelerating to decelerate to zero, and then the direction is changed. So you can see that it is running in the reverse direction, and you can also see a negative value here stating that the direction is reverse. So I will increase the frequency to 15. And you can see that the drive is now running at 50 hertz. If you go to our status screen, you can see that the drive is running and it's actually running in the reverse direction. So right now, I'm going to manually create a fault on the VFD. To do this, I will change the CPU from run to stop. This will cause it to lose communication with the variable frequency drive and cause the drive to fault. We can then see if we receive the feedback on our HMI here. So right now, I will change the CPU from stop run to stop. Back to run. You can see that the um, drive is flashing green and showing a fault. And you can see that the motor has also stopped. On my HMI here, you can see that there's a drive fault active and there's also a warning active. So we can actually see that the drive has faulted. I have a clear fault button here. This is actually going to reset the fault. So if I click it right now, you can see that the fault and the warnings have disappeared. I can now try to run my motor clockwise again. And you can see the drive is running and it's running in the forward direction. On the variable frequency drive, you can see that the light is now solid green. The frequency is changing once again and the motor is running as intended. For systems where detailed control and feedback parameters are required, Profibus offers a significant advantage over voltage and current control methodologies. Knowledge of this would be a great advantage for an automation engineer. Thanks for watching.